Ladies and gentlemen, we looked all over Lake County and we found a, a fantastic guest that I'm sure that you're going to be happy to, to because she is uh, educational, inspirational, and have a great message for us. The guest is Jennifer Witherspoon. She's an attorney at law, uh, Waukegan, Illinois. Uh, she has her law degree, a J JD, Jewish doctor from the John Marshall Law School in Chicago. Matter of fact, that was in 2005. <laughs> Greetings, uh, Attorney Witherspoon. Greetings. How are you? <laughs> We're very happy that you literally taking time from your busy schedule to be uh, with us on Zoom here in uh, Lake County uh, to tell our listening audience uh, about the great things that you are doing uh, since you have been in this uh, area. Uh, first of all, I'd like for you to tell our listening audience a little bit about your personal and professional background. Ooh, how much time is this show? <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, am, I Like you said, I'm, I'm an attorney. I graduated in 2005 from John Marshall Law School. I grew up in Chicago. For those of you who know anything about Chicago, um, I grew up at the Robert Taylor Homes. So mm. that can tell you right there how my, my upbringing has been. Um, I was one of seven kids born to my parents. Um, I went to college at Western Illinois University in Macomb. Woohoo! And I well, I, I'm I'm a red bird. Oh, you're <laughs> so I went I went to Illinois State. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but um, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, that's okay. Um, my husband's in the military, so um, we traveled. We lived in different states, not out of the state, and we ended up coming back here to this area when he retired. And I've been I've been a probation officer. I've been a uh, a legal advocate for battered women. I was a special investigator for the state attorney's office. As a matter of fact, the only female and the only African American there. And so I did 20 years working for county government. Um, I was, uh, uh, you might know me from being the chief of the Lake County Jail for a while. I was in house counsel with the sheriff's office. I've had a many, many um, different places I did. And well, I'd like for you to tell us, how did you escape your rainforest? You say you were from the Robert Taylor Homes. How mm -hmm. did you escape? Well, I, I, cause I had to make it quite simply, to put it quite simply, I had a God fearing mother mm -hmm. and she instilled that in each and every one of us. Okay. Now what piqued your interest in uh, the law profession? Well, going back to the projects, I remember, I, I was not to say how old I was, but it was during the 60s when civil rights was just getting started, the Black Panthers were just getting started, and I noticed something at a very early age. I noticed that the police officers that were there really to help and to, 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 to try to help make our lives a little bit better, I, I, really, I really looked up to them. And then you had the ones that were, you know, just rude, disrespectful, treating others as if they were inhuman. So I, I saw those two examples and I, I decided I was going to be a cop, I was going to be a police officer, and I was going to be one of the good cops. And that began my journey into my career. <laughs> I may say this, though, um, John Marshall <coughs> was great to Lake County because I attended a luncheon by the Leadership Council for Metropolitan Open Communities. You heard of that group? Mm -hmm. They had a luncheon in Chicago and I was invited to attend and I was sitting next to a young man, uh, Lonnie Randolph from uh, old Gary, Indiana. And uh, uh, he had just graduated from John Marshall Law School and I uh, told him about Lake County because there were no black attorneys, assistant state's attorneys in Lake County. He said, well, Brooks, for you, I'll do this. So he came up and he was hired. Dennis Ryan said, if you find a black assistant state's attorney, I'll hire him. So Lonnie was the first black that was uh, hired uh, in, in the Lake County state's attorney's office. 
Lonnie did this for one year. He tr he commuted for one year. He said, Brooks, oh. he say, I, I did this for you, but I can't cut it anymore. Right. Now, Lonnie Randolph is a judge now. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. And I, I, I'm still in contact with him and I like to get him up here to, uh, um, talk to Lake County about how we got together and the contributions that he made. So I'm familiar with the John Marshall Law School uh, in Chicago, and I understand it is a outstanding school, right? Yes, they, we call John, Mar John Marshall is called the Working Man's Law School because when you the reputation is you'll be able to argue with anybody once you graduate from John Marshall. <laughs> Mm -hmm. yeah. What about women in the legal profession? I, I, I know it's 1920, you know, uh, when women were first given the right to vote, right? Now we have women attorneys, but uh, uh, I understand we have uh, quite a few women attorneys now. Right. And, and, and I think the, the, the groundwork was laid by, God rest her soul, Ruth Gaynor, uh, Ginsburg, mm. Supreme Court Justice. Um, she fought tirelessly to to have more women come in law school. I know there were several stories she told about how difficult it was being a woman in law school. But uh, we we made some traction, but we still have a, a long way to go. Uh, you mentioned the many uh, experiences that you've had since you've been in Lake County, and if if I it. It would take a whole program to name <laughs> to name yep. all the ones that you and I just like to just mention just a uh, a few. You mentioned that in addition to have your JD Jewish doctor, you have a certification from Northwestern University in mediation. Tell us about the importance of mediation. I think mediation is very important because what it does, it allows the parties to come together at a substantially less cost versus you hire an attorney and going into courtroom and you fight it out. Mediation takes both parties, sit them, sits them down and says, what do you want? You know, what do you want resolved? And we ask the other party, what do you want resolved? And we'll come together um, and, and try to get the best deal possible. And once we do, have a mediation agreement we you can take that and file it with the court and the judge makes it an order it's a lot cheaper and and less you don't have to wait as long to just to get a court date it's hard um attorney willispoon you mentioned we are a new kind of law firm for a changing world uh you want to tell us about uh the significance of that well, our, my law firm, what we do is once we decide, we give you, first of all, a consultation. If after you receive the consultation, I think, okay, we can handle this one. Um, you'll notice, people notice when they come into the office, it's set up differently than you've seen most attorneys. You got the big desk in front of them and you're over there and they're over here and projecting maybe an air of, you know, I'm better than you. We're not like that at all. The, our, my desk is against the wall. I have couches where you can sit, you can bring your kids. You know, if, I know a lot of times you don't have anybody to watch your children, but there's an important legal matter you must attend to. So, you know, we, we, we have a television, a television, iPads, all that stuff for the kids. Now we're not encouraging you to bring your, your child with you on every, at every uh, legal appointment you have, but we, we want to give people that op that opportunity. And as well, we, uh, we also introduce people to different resources that they may not have, have known about that's in our community here. You were an EEO, Equal Employment Opportunity, and a mediation specialist. I believe that was with the Lake County Sheriff's Office, right? But, Hello? but you have you, the EEO and mediation specialist with the Lake County Sheriff's Office. Matter of fact, you were there for about 12 years. Yes. That was quite an experience. Then. Well, before that, though, I was a probation officer and then I was the 
the special investigator, like I said, and then that's when I, after that, I went into the sheriff's office. Mm -hmm. um, well, what about institutionalized racism? Is it any different now than it was then? No, what I find, because part of what my practice does, we do, we do discrimination cases mm -hmm. um, related to employment, you know, wrong for termination, harassment, all those type of things. What I've seen is it's not as covert, it's more overt now. So you have to really look into it and, and you, as an attorney, you have to get under that veneer that's on top to get to the nitty gritty about what's really going on with this, um, this employer, why they're treating their, their employee a certain way. You were um, prosecuting attorney at one time with the state's attorney's office or were you uh, uh, special investigator? I was a special investigator. Okay, okay. Okay. And then after the, after that is when I went into the sheriff's office. Okay, okay. That must have been quite a big experience because you were with the sheriff's office for 12 long years, huh? It was. It was. The the best part about that was when I, well, I would pick a day out of a week. It was never the same day where I could go through the jail and I just walk through the jail talking to the inmates, you know, hey, what's going on, you know. Don't come back here. That's my famous line. Even now, if I see someone was there, they'll say, I'm not going back there. I said, good. <laughs> so I, that, that, I love doing that. I love connecting with people. You know, I, I, I made no qualms about it. I, everybody, if you know me, you know I'm a Christian. It's, it was, I would go through and pray with those young men in my head. Not so much, you know, as, you know, we're standing there, but in my head, I'm praying for them. Mm -hmm. But tell us about, um, you may want to touch on, I can't pronounce it, it's sex, sexton, sex. Oh, sexting. How you pronounce <laughs> sex? Yeah, okay. so you might recall, it was a lot of that going on, uh, probably about uh, anywhere from five to 10 years, but it, it has slowed down, but it's still happening. As a matter of fact, as a hearing officer with the Lake, with the, the Waukegan School District, we, what happens is if the administration gets hold of the fact that you're sexting, then, you know, you risk being expelled. And what sexting is, is it's a, it's where you send new photos of yourself, uh, new photos of somebody else that you didn't have permission to do to another underage person. So it's always between minors that when this happens and what the thing about it is people think that it's harmless, but it not, it's not, everyone knows that the internet is forever. You, you know, you think that all oh, they took them down, but trust me, it doesn't go away. It's still there. And then what happens is we find that when those things start to pop up, you know, years down the line, who never, who knows, you know, you might be a billionaire and then all of a sudden you got these nude photos of you. Um, but it is against the law. I don't care if you both agreed with it. I don't care if you both, uh, uh, you took the, had the camera and she had them. Doesn't matter. It's against the law. And you can face being uh, prosecuted for that. Well, what about identity theft? Is that on the rise now? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Um, uh, cases. You, the thing of it is, is the current president has stated about um, um, you, you, you know, their phony ballots and, 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 and he's worked. But the thing of it is, is identity theft, when that occurs, most people don't realize that the first $50 that they uh, spent, you're covered on there. You know, so you wouldn't have to pay the $50 back. But the thing of it is, is when, when you're, when you're sex sexting, let me say this, this part too. Um, so even if you think it's a joke, you, you're saying, okay, this is just a joke. I sent this body part as a joke. Don't even, it's like when you go to the airport, you're not going to yell bomb while they're checking you into. So don't, don't even, don't even send any kind of new photos, period. Uh, now you have uh, 
a law office on your own. Um, so how did you determine that you just want to do be have your own law practice? And because you have quite a bit of experience, you've been. We didn't mention that you was president of the NAAC, Lake County NAACP at one time also, right? Yes, that's something I'm very proud of, yeah. Um, and now is there still a need for an NAACP? <laughs> is there a need for air? <laughs> I, I, I think so, I would think so, especially in today's age and time. I mean, it's just, like I mentioned before about being covert and overt, the racism is now into the phase of being overt. Don't care. They just, you know, people are just saying what they think and doing what they feel like. And um, it's, it's, it's very dangerous. Now, was that a goal of yours to have your own office? Yes. It was a goal of mine to have my own firm. From when I was 10 years old, I knew I wanted to be an attorney. Well, I, I know that you have shown, and, and I have a list, uh, I guess it could go on and on, the leadership, uh, you've shown creativity, uh, strategic planning you've done, uh, and because of you, you've, uh, your vision was to see community uh, needs, yes. and, and you, uh, you're just so happy and you're doing a great job uh, uh, in, in the community and finding out what the needs are, and not only finding out what the needs are, but contributing to the yes. success of the uh, community. Yes, thank you very and, much. And I think that was great. But um, uh, location is a great importance, if, I guess, of any business. Now, are you um, centrally located? Yes, uh, I, yeah, I'm right downtown um, near the courthouse. Um, but you have to call and make an appointment because because our door you have to be buzzed in. Okay. Now and this I, uh, virus going around too though uh, it it has made a difference too, right? Right. Just like you know, I have court tomorrow. We're doing it via Zoom. Mm. You know, um, which is a great thing. Um, and then uh, in my office, we we do Zoom to do an interview for your consultation. So, you know, unless you, you know, it's something where we could help you have to come and drop something off, uh, we, we're not we're not letting people in our office, but you can always call to make an appointment and we'll set you up with a Zoom meeting. Mm -hmm. I, I had an appointment with my doctor yesterday and they uh, met me at the door and took my temperature mm -hmm. and wouldn't even let my wife come in yeah. uh, until it was time for me to see the doctor, then they let her come in and, and then, but, but uh, it's, it's be very careful. And this is a real thing mm -hmm. now too. It's no joke. No, it's not. <laughs> the president, the president found that out. Well, well, two, 200 and 210,000 people mm -hmm. have died. I mean, it's like you said, it's no joke. And we all need to take it very seriously. Mm -hmm. and, uh, now, what about the law? <clears throat> uh, the young, young, young people that may want to go into uh, the law profession. Uh, uh, are there opportunities uh, by the law association to go in and talk with the kids in the in the classroom? Yes, you can call the Lake County Bar Association oh, okay. and they will set set you up with an attorney. There's a list of attorneys that say, OK, I want to voluntarily go and talk to schools. So they'll take somebody um, off of that list and schedule them to come and speak at, at the at the school. I noticed that uh, some of the top colleges are offering minority students scholarship, even in, in law schools. Yes, I heard about. I wish it was. <laughs> I wish it was earlier. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. when I graduated from high school, I, I received an academic scholarship, and the total amount was forty dollars per semester. At Illinois State, forty dollars wow. per semester. So that that dates me a little bit, right? 
<laughs> yeah, you got a good price for it, though. <laughs> now, do you do you have a, you have an opportunity to to counsel students? Yeah. Yes. Oh, but you say the American Bar Association would provide that service, though, too, right? Uh, no, the the Lake County Bar Association. Um, okay. you, you try to go local. Lo there's always usually a bar association locally. So you just call Lake County Bar Association if you're a teacher, or even if you if you're a pastor or what, what whoever you are. Um, and if it involves you know helping young people make positive choices, mm -hmm. I'm 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 one of those people that's right there. So I'm wondering, um, I had mentioned about the percentage of women in the in the law. What about Lake County? Uh, do you have a significant number of women uh, attorneys com compared to men? Well, no, men still outnumber us. <laughs> There's no question about it. They outnumber us. Okay. Yeah. In, in, in the in the colleges too, then, right? Oh, and going to law school, yes. Yeah, yeah. And I, I assume the number is increasing. Yeah, I, I would yeah. assume that as well. I hope yeah. it will as well. Right, right. Well, you mentioned in your early experience, um, <clears throat> the, the, the projects that you grew up in, um, do they still exist or have they been torn down? Yeah, the Robert Taylor Homes was one of the first ones that were torn down. Uh -huh. Cabrini Green is still there, though. Eh? Yeah, some parts. They tore some of it. They redeveloped it. They tore them down and they rebuilt them. And mm -hmm. now I think it's a mixed income. That area over there is a mixed income area. Okay. Well, what about your ultimate goal? I know you've been, you've been, uh, 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 have several professions, several associations, and several contributions, but your ultimate goal hmm. is it to be a judge? I, I wonder about attorneys. Is that usually a goal of an attorney to be uh, a judge? Attorneys, yeah, some attorneys, but I think I'm a little bit older, so that's not something that I think I want to <laughs> save that for the younger attorneys. I, I don't, I don't know. I don't want to be a judge. <laughs> Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, Waukegan, we made a little progress. We have one judge, one African-American judge. Oh, we have an appellate judge, too, but, but tell us about the appellate court. Uh, we, we, first of all, you have the associate judges, right? Mm -hmm. Then the circuit court judge, and then um, you have, uh, what, the uh, appellate court. Now, the appellate court, is, is that located... Um, uh, not in Lake County, right? No, it's not in Lake County. I know there's, uh, you know what, that's, a, I, I believe that there's a branch in Springfield, but I, I know it's um, somewhere else too. And what the, so you went through, you had your case, you went through the case, you came out, you know, and they found you guilty. But your attorney is saying they, di they didn't do this right, they didn't do that right, or other circumstances related to whatever that case was that was already adjudicated. Mm -hmm. What you're saying when you appeal it, you're saying, I don't agree with the, the decision that was made because there was some mixed up, shouldn't be happening, things happen, so the person can appeal it. Right, right, right. Um, what oh, about the, you, you were the president of the Coalition to Reduce Recidivism. Matter of fact, you're still the president there. <laughs> yes, you, yes. You you want to tell us uh, just a uh, glimpse of, uh, of so, what you do there? So, okay, I think I've been with I think I went spoke earlier. I said I had been with them for fifteen years. Um, I had been with them for thirteen years. There was another event that I went to when I misspoke. But with okay. the coalition to, to reduce, what I saw when I was the chief at the jail was you ha you know I'm, I'm giving programs. I'm giving programs. They're doing you know getting their GED. They're learning job skills i'm teaching them how to communicate effectively all those things and they would be so gung ho and just ready to you know once they stepped out the door they're like oh yeah i'm gonna do it this time i'm never coming back there mm -hmm. but when i went home uh 
uh, Ray Ray and them down the street are still, they're still doing the same things that they were doing when you, when that person went to prison or jail. You still have, you're still hanging around the, the same folks that caused you to get, to catch a case anyway. What the coalition to, to produce recidivism does is the Lake County Jail and the coalition used to work together. So when that person walked out the door, they knew that they knew they knew that they had support. They can get support from the walk from the coalition to reduce recidivism. The whole entire um, um, membership is made up of you know doctors, lawyers, uh, uh, whoever. The guy that just did ten years in, in San Quentin, a bunch of different people because they realize we realize that even though you paid your dues to society society is not going to help you make your life better you know you have to partner with other folks to get the services you need to help you change your your life to turn your life around one thing that i'm proud of with the coalition is we have given and i don't have the stats in front of me so many different jobs to folks walking straight out of uh, jails and prisons and i'm very proud of that because we know that studies show that if you don't have a job, that increases the chances of you recidivating. I noticed that uh, annually you have a banquet to give uh, people in the community an opportunity to come out and um, you know hear about your program. But this year, I understand uh, because of the virus situation, uh, you're having a, a program by Zoom. Yes, we did. And it was, it was wonderful. That was the first time, you know, we, you know, we ever tried anything like that. And I think that the people liked it. I know that the, the speakers were phenomenal. Um, I, I really enjoyed it this year. I, I, you should have joined in with us. Yeah, I, I know it's uh, uh, at, at 87. I can't get around like I used to, you know. <laughs> but I, I, I'm, I'm proud to be, uh, uh, go go to Zoom and uh, and do what I'm doing now, you know. But yeah. uh, I, I'm, I'm glad it, it turned out well. Yes. I think we're about the end of uh, our program here now, but I had to let Lake County know of what great people that we do have. In, uh, and like I say, I looked all over Lake County and I found the best. Well, I, I just wanted to say, um, I saw my the telephone number scrolling across. That's that's not our office number. Our office number, our office number is 847-672-7819. Okay. Okay. okay, repeat that again. 847-672-7819. Eight, 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 seven, 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 eight, Very good. So I'll uh, uh, see if I can get that out uh, correctly there. So thank you very much for your, your time and and um, uh, be looking forward to uh, part two. That, uh, <laughs> let's see, this this is it now, right? Eight four seven seven six seven two is going across the screen yes, now. Yeah. Seven eight one nine. Yeah. Oh, we go first class. All we right, I like class. it. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this has been Lake County Community Forum. We've been talking with attorney Jennifer Witherspoon, attorney at law uh, degree, uh, J.D. Juris Doctor from John Marshall Law School in Chicago, and she's practicing now in Waukegan, Illinois. This has been Community Forum. My name is Dr. Wandell Brooks, Sr., your host.